Hey guys, good morning, happy Friday. I hope everybody's doing well. I swear I have never released so many messages from God back to back to back, you guys, ever in my life. Um, so, and I know you guys have heard me say this on videos before, um, especially like my recent videos. This is the most that the Lord has ever had me release back to back to back. If you guys look at my history, like, the Lord will have me give a message like once a week or twice or I'm sorry, or once every two weeks. But I've never um, released this many messages back to back to back that the Lord has just downloaded in my spirit. So last quarter, guys, fourth quarter, that's what we in. That's what we're in. I can't even talk this morning. So I know that I know that I know that we're in a shift and it's it's just nuts. So here I am again. Um, I actually went to sleep kind of early last night. Um, I had a new friend over that I, I just met recently and I prayed over her. We hung out for a little bit, but I went to sleep pretty early. Um, and I woke up after having a dream and a vision. It was like one in the morning uh, a little after one in the morning, I woke up after having a dream and a vision. Both of these things went together, but it was kind of confusing. So I, I woke up, I read scripture, let God download to me what it meant. Um, and he did, but I'm not going to release that to you guys right now. Um, because even though I know what it meant, <laughs> like you guys know, you hear me say this a lot in my videos, God speaks to me a lot in parables. And even though he downloads to me what something means, um, sometimes it's difficult for me to get on here and explain what it means to you guys without sounding crazy. So um, seems like I've been getting the job done, all glory to God, because I've received, you know, the comments and the emails and like people are just like, I understand what you're saying. Like, <laughs> thank God for your obedience. And I'm thankful that he's able to download interpretations in me, um, within my spirit that I can give to you guys. And it makes sense because guys, it's been difficult. That has been a difficult task for me and I'm up for the task, but it, it has been like difficult. Um, <laughs> even if I try to explain the interpretation of the dream and the vision that I have this morning, you guys will be looking at me on this screen. Like I have four heads, um, because yeah, it, it won't make sense. Um, so I'm going to hold off on that one until I can put it in <laughs> the English language um, to where you guys can understand what I'm saying, because it is a bit of a, it's a huge parable. Um, so that one I'm going to hold off on, but I was laying on my sofa after I had that vision and that dream in the wee hours of this morning after reading my word, and I fell asleep on my sectional in my living room. And as soon as I fell asleep, um, or actually, no. Yeah, as soon as I fell asleep, I had another dream. Um, and that dream went to the first dream and vision that I had also. So I got up, went in my room, fell asleep again, and I had another dream. And this dream was separate um, from the other two dreams and the vision that I had um, the couple hours prior. Um, so with me, the Lord uses every moment, guys. Like I can fall asleep for three minutes and have a full-fledged dream and interpretation in like three minutes. So the Lord will use every opportunity to speak. Um, but when I went in my room, I had this dream and that's the dream I'm going to release to you guys um, in the interpretation that the Lord gave me because it's really important in this season um, and overall, <laughs> but especially in this season that a lot of us are going um, into of harvest and um, fruits and, you know, just reaping what we've sown. Like God is so good and his grace and his mercy, like he is just amazing. And a lot of us are stepping into like a season of abundance. Um, but this message is not just for those that are stepping into a season of harvest, but it's for people in general. Um, because regardless of what season you're in, um, we need to pay attention to our surroundings and we also need to um, recognize the authority that we carry um, by the blood of Jesus. Uh, we really need to tap into that authority. 
So, excuse me. That's what I'm going to um, release to you guys today. Should not take too long. I always say that in my videos end up being 30 minutes, but this shouldn't take too long at all. Um, and I actually had this dream after I checked my YouTube studio um, to see if there were any comments because I like to read you guys' comments and respond to you. And I saw this, <laughs> this young lady um, and of course, like not just children of God come to watch my channel, but, and I said this previous to the devil's children, like the people that worship Satan that, you know, don't really believe in God, they come to mock um, prophets um, and the word of God. They come to mock. So not all of the messages that I get are always positive on my channel, which is fine. You have to realize that when you choose to pick up your cross and walk with the Lord, that you will encounter <laughs> difficult people. You will go through trials and tribulations, but you'll always win because we're walking with the Lord and we're covered in his blood. So this young lady commented twice and I ended up blocking her and deleting the comment. Um, but she's like, you really need to check your heart because you get on here speaking the word of God and your hair is pink. And she's like, even the shirt you have on in this video has a weird symbol on it. So you really need to check your heart. And are you really working for God? And like a whole bunch of nonsense, guys. Um, so I read her comment and I kind of laughed. But at the same time, I really wanted to comment back and not to curse her out or anything. I don't do any of that. <laughs> That's my previous life years ago. Okay, God has transformed me, but your girl used to be a little hood before holy, okay? But that, that was a long time ago. Um, so I didn't want to curse her out or anything, but I, look, I read her message and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like, ignorance is bliss to Satan. And he is making his followers more ignorant by the minute, okay? And ignorant doesn't mean stupid or, you know, or dumb. Ignorant means just they don't know. So this is why we have to say, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do, for they know not what they say. Because this ignorance is like, it makes Satan so happy to see ignorant people like her. And I wanted to respond, but the Lord quickly put on my spirit to delete um, the comment and to block her. So that's what I did. Um, but he also gave me a dream when I fell asleep. And it wasn't just for her, but it was for like the body, like th this world, like the, the, the body of Christ. But just like all of us were born as when he, before he formed us in the womb, he knew us. It says this in scripture. He assigned us as prophets of the nation, which means that we were all um, formed as his child. Okay, even the ones that don't follow him, he still loves them. And just like all of us, like we went from being sinners to walking with the Lord. And we're, we're still sinners because we live in a sinful world. No one's completely 100% sinless except the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, so we're all still considered sinners, but we choose to follow in the footsteps that the Lord has set, set for us. We choose to follow Christ. Um, so he redeems us daily. Like his grace, it, it renews daily. Like he, he is just the most forgiving father. And this is why we have to have a heart of repentance. Like we repent for sins that we commit knowingly and unknowingly. Okay. Because we're not perfect. He's the only perfect being. Um, so the dream he gave me, and I'm going to, um, tell you guys the dream, then interpret it for you. But basically he was saying that when people come against us, that, yeah, sometimes the things that they say can anger us and make us angry, but the end game here, and I've said this in so many videos prior, is to save souls, and that's the Lord's goal is to save as many souls as possible before the second coming so that these people can be made right within the Lord and that they don't have to suffer. They don't have to suffer with being sent to hell. Like the end game is to save souls, guys. Um, so anyway, let me get into the dream. In this dream, I was camping with my family and with friends. Um, there were people camping with us that I didn't know, but in the dream, I knew that they were close friends of ours. Um, and it was a bunch of my family. And we were on this campground, but it was kind of like an upscale campground. Um, like we were in this open um, 
this very open cabin, like it was a wooden cabin, but it was really nice. And we were just having a good time. And inside of the cabin was like flowers planted. There was a garden, like it was beautiful inside this open cabin. Um, but there was a ton of people, again, family and friends. And I knew that we were all close. So I came from outside and I walk into the cabin to come in where everyone else is. And I see this, um, my, my, he's not my friend in real life. He's, he actually works at my apartment complex, but his name is Corbin and, um, he's a Caucasian guy and he's sitting, you know, in the cabin, just sitting on the floor on the wood, just relaxing. Um, so I see him sitting there. I see my nieces, um, getting ready for bed. Um, one niece in particular, like I noticed her more than the others, but my niece is, my niece was getting ready for bed, this one in particular, and she's like making a, a little pallet or like, a, you guys don't know what a pallet is, just putting a blanket on the floor, preparing herself to go to bed inside of the cabin. And I look towards where, where Corbin is sitting and he's next to this garden of flowers and this black python snake is standing up like you know how snakes get ready to strike so they're kind of like positioned like this like this is their head and their body so they're positioned like this and this snake is hissing and it's in attack mode and the snake is looking directly at my niece who my niece doesn't see the snake nobody else sees the snake that's getting ready to attack her um, but it's in position in attack mode it's hissing I see it and um, I look around me for something to kind of throw the snake's way to distract it. I'm thinking whatever I throw this, whatever I throw at the snake, it'll at least distract the snake. And then my niece can kind of get up and run or whatever the case may be. So that was my whole end game because I knew that I didn't have anything to kill the snake with. So I'm looking around and I pick up this packet of hot cocoa, guys, a packet of hot cocoa mix. And I threw it at the snake. When I threw this hot cocoa mix at the snake, it hit the snake in the head and the snake died, guys. Like, the snake died from this pack of hot cocoa mix that hit it on the head, like literally just fell out. And this was a black python, right? It was a black python. When it fell, it fell by the, um, the guy Corbin's leg, right? And as it fell and died, the snake turned white. And then Corbin starts like rubbing the snake, like petting it, almost like comforting the snake. And he's like laying on the snake, like almost kind of like mourning the death of this snake. And I'm looking at him in, in the dream and I'm thinking in the dream, like, what if the snake just gets up and attacks him? Like, why is he laying on this snake? Of course, the snake is dead, so the snake is just lifeless. But Corbin is like comforting the snake, like almost as if he's like sad that the snake is dead, right? Like he's petting the snake like the snake is his friend, basically, like it's his pet or something. And my niece then notices what had just happened, that the snake died. And my sister Tara is there. And she also notices like what happened after the snake had died and so forth. So my niece comes to me and she's like, what did you kill the snake with? And I tell her, I'm like, you won't even believe what just killed the snake. I'm like, I would have to tell you like what I just used to kill the snake. I'm like, but you won't believe it. And I woke up. Okay. When I woke up, I'm like, Lord, why? How did hot cocoa, a packet of hot cocoa, kill this snake, right? And that was my first thought. I'm like, hot cocoa? Um, and I've been studying this dream all day, guys. And I'm going to interpret it to you how he gave it to me. But it's very, it, this is a very important dream. And it's not just for me. There's like big birds flying outside of my, my window. So I'm like looking up. But the way he interpreted it for me, and mind you, keep in mind that I had this dream right after I read this comment from this young lady, kind of upset me a little bit, had to delete the comment and, um, and block her. This is a dream that came right after it. And the Lord explained to me, and I'm going to, let me read the scripture that he gave me first, guys. And I'm going to read from the Living Bible Translation. 
I'm reading from 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 through 5. I use, God, I use God's mighty weapons, not those made by men, to knock down the devil's strongholds. These weapons can break down every proud argument against God and every wall that can be built to keep men from finding him. With these weapons, I can capture rebels and bring them back to God and change them into men whose heart's desire is obedience to Christ. I'm going to read that one more time, guys. I use God's mighty weapons, not those made by men, to knock down the devil's strongholds. These weapons can break down every proud argument against God and every wall that can be built to keep men from finding him. With these weapons, I can capture rebels and bring them back to God and change them into men whose heart's desire is obedience to Christ. Guys, the Lord is so good, even when he speaks in parables. And what he was showing me in this dream is that we don't need weapons. This is the first point. We don't need carnal weapons, as in worldly weapons, guns, um, arrows, um, our words, because your words are weapons. Your word can be a weapon. The words of your mouth, the word that you speak. That's why scripture says there's life and death in the power of the tongue. We don't need worldly weapons to defeat Satan, okay? All we need is the word of God to defeat Satan, not worldly carnal weapons. When we are in the presence of the Lord and when we choose to walk with God, he gives us, first of all, he covers us with the blood of Jesus. So we're all, he's already given us, with that coverage, the authority to trample on serpents, okay? To trample on snakes, to trample on Satan, to defeat snakes. He gave us the ability to cast Satan down. This is also why scripture says that whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we release on earth is released in, released in heaven. When spiritual warfare comes near us, because Satan is not, you're not going to see Satan in the flesh, but he will use people, fleshly people here on earth to work for him and to come against you as well. But if you just speak with your mouth life over the situation, if you're speaking life, you're speaking God out of your mouth, okay? You're speaking his spirit out of your mouth. Your words are God. So all you have to do is bind everything and everybody that Satan uses to come against you. Just like that young lady, she commented, her comments were rude. They were not of God. Like I knew this. All I had to do as opposed to getting like offended and ready to snap on her was, Lord, I bind every mouth that comes against me because I am here to speak your word. I'm here as your messenger. I am your ambassador. So I bind everyone and everything that comes against me in the mighty name of Jesus. I release the blood of Jesus over my channel and over every message that I put out for your people to, to stand in its purpose. Okay, to, to do its purpose, to do its job in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever you bind, all I had to do was bind, speak the words. I bind everything that comes against me in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever you bind here on earth is bound in heaven. I release the blood of Jesus over this channel, over my family, over myself in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever you release here on earth is released in heaven. Our weapons that we use, just like Hot cocoa that I use, a hot cocoa packet, when I threw it at the snake in the dream, it killed the snake. No one in, on this, in this planet, on this planet, in this world, will throw hot cocoa at a snake or at a person expecting it to die. It just won't happen. Hot cocoa is not a carnal worldly weapon that you use to defeat anything. But the Lord was trying to say that you don't need worldly weapons to defeat. You have me. He's saying you have me. Like my presence, that hot cocoa in the dream served as the presence of God. It was hot cocoa in a white packet. White symbolizes righteousness. But he used that packet of hot cocoa to symbolize his presence. Being in the presence of God, walking, picking up your cross and walking with him automatically gives you guys, automatically gives me the authority to defeat anybody and anything and any enemy that Satan sends to come against us and our family in any way, shape or form. 
okay, in any way, shape, or form. So that's what the Lord was trying to say. Use me, use my presence, use the authority that I gave you when someone or something comes against you that's not of me. Use me. I am your father. He's saying, use me, guys. And of course, he says in um, Luke chapter 10, verse 19, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you with the authority that he's giving us, that he's given us by covering us with the blood of Jesus. Nothing, guys, nothing can harm us. Nothing can come against us. We have the ability to trample on any and everything sent by the enemy and it will not harm us. Okay. When I walked into this cabin, and it goes a little bit deeper than this, but I'm going to keep this quick and short and to the point because I know that I'm making sense. So follow me, guys. When I walked into the cabin and Corbin, Corbin is a Caucasian guy. His name actually means raven, guys. A raven biblically is an unclean spirit. That's what a raven symbolizes biblically. And I won't make this long to get into like the meaning behind raven. But if you guys do your research and read your read scripture about ravens, um, they symbolize unclean spirits, okay? They symbolize unclean spirits. But even in scripture, the Lord um, had authority over ravens. Like he had ravens, um, a raven feeding Ezekiel. I believe it was Ezekiel. He had a raven to send food to feed Ezekiel. We know that in real life, a raven, when a raven goes out and find foods, find food, finds food, I can't not even speak because I'm trying to get this done because I have to get to work. But when a raven goes out to find food, it is not normal for a raven to bring food back to a person. A raven will go out, eat, kill its prey, whatever it has to do, but it's not coming back to feed you. But in scripture, the Lord used a raven to feed Ezekiel. You know why? Because the Lord has authority over every creepy thing on this earth. The Lord has ultimate power and he's given that power to you and to me as well. We have the authority to trample over every single thing, every single thing of the enemy. And we don't have this authority in our own strength, but in the strength that God has given us. Okay, so anyway, Corbin, his name means raven or crow, but raven is what Corbin means. And he was a Caucasian guy. When I threw the hot cocoa at this snake, the snake was a black python. Okay, and in the dream, I remember um, telling my niece also, and I left this out, I was like, that was a python. Like, I just killed a python. This is what I was telling my niece when she finally realized what had happened. So it was a black python snake. When I threw the hot cocoa, it killed the snake. The snake turned white. Okay, Corbin, also a white male. Name means raven. Okay, raven is an unclean spirit. The Lord was showing Corbin as a white man because white um, symbolizes righteousness. But even, it's Satan's, job, it's Satan's job to portray himself as close to the light as possible. He, he shows up as the light, portraying himself as God, in which we all know he's a false God, but he shows up as light, okay? He also does not show up in places that makes him stand out. He shows up in places that he fits into, just like in um, with Eve and Adam, he showed up in the garden. A snake belongs in the garden. In my dream, the snake came out of a garden. Snakes belong in the garden. So he doesn't show up looking out of place. When he sends people that are working for him here on earth, he doesn't send people that looks out of place. He sends normal, attractive people, good personalities, people that you call your friends, um, and he portrays them as light. Okay, we see that we see these people as light. But the Lord was showing that Corbin, again, his name means Raven, which is an unclean spirit. Even though he portrayed himself as light, he was really darkness. But just like when I threw that hot cocoa pack at the python and the python turned from white, um, from black to white as it died, we have the ability to use our words, to use our weapons, to use our authority in Christ 
to turn any dark spirit to righteousness, okay? And that's what the Lord was showing me with turning that snake from black to white in its death. We have the, the ability to defeat Satan, not just um, who Satan sends to come against us, but when we run into people and the Lord shows us that these people have dark spirits and um, they're not right with Christ. They're not walking with him. And we see this in people. We have the ability to speak life over them, to kill the lifelessness in them, to kill the attachments and the strongholds that Satan has on them. We have the ability to speak life over these people, to kill the lifelessness in them and to turn them from dark and unclean to righteous. We have this ability through him. We are sent here. We are working for the Lord Jesus Christ in order to save souls. It's bigger than us. No, we can't save them on our own, on our, on our own accord. The Lord Jesus Christ has to save them, but we have the ability to speak life towards the people, even with unclean spirits. Okay. Python symbolized divination, witchcraft. So even those that come to us with the spirit of divination and the Python spirit, and we see the darkness in them and they speak death over us. Like we have the ability to speak life into them. We have the ability to use the presence of God and our connection with God, our intimacy with God to speak life into others and to help save souls. We can change a snake from dark, in which the snake went from black, but when it died, it turned white, which symbolizes righteousness. The Lord was showing me that with our weapons that are not worldly weapons, just like that hot cocoa, again, guys, was not a weapon that will, in reality, kill a snake, okay? But if the presence of God is attached to you and you're using the authority that he gave you to, to kill things that are not of him, they will die every time and they will not harm you. And you not only have the ability to trample over Satan and to kill him, but you have the ability to help save souls, to move people from unrighteousness and the strongholds that they have attached to Satan to have them attached to the Lord Jesus Christ to speak life over them, to speak life into them and to lead them to the same person that we were led to, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And they can be made righteous as well. We all used to live an unrighteous life. All of us. Okay. Many of us came to know Christ because we, we were broken and we ran to him. But a lot of us he used his his people, his ambassadors, Christ used his children to speak life into you, to tell you who the Lord Jesus Christ is, not who he was, because he's not dead. The Lord Jesus is alive and well. He's alive and well. But all of us learned about who the Lord Jesus Christ was from somebody else. Somebody, a pastor, an evangelist, um, a preacher, somebody taught us who the Lord Jesus Christ is. And it's our job to do that for other people, even if they come to us and they're they're speaking death over us. And we're like, you, you have a dark spirit. Doesn't mean you have to be all over them throwing holy oil at them, but you have the power of life in your tongue. Our weapons are not carnal. They're not worldly weapons. But the authority that we have, again, guys, has the ability to defeat Satan. And we are here to save souls. And God has given us that authority. The fact that the snake looked at my little niece and was getting ready to attack her symbolized generational curses, how Satan is, is um, using generational curses to keep our family members bound. And the Lord is using um, his chosen ones, the ones that he's chosen for this task. Um, to break these generational curses within these families before they even attach itself to the younger generation, before they even develop this stronghold. Like the Lord is giving us the authority to break generational curses before they even start. Okay, Satan doesn't always come directly for you and his tactics. He uses he, he uses people that are close to you. He'll come to people that are close to you and try to hurt the people that you love because he knows that it's going to affect you. But the Lord has given you, the Lord has given me power to trample over him, to break generational cycles, to protect our loved ones, to cover our family members with the blood of the Lord. He's given us that authority to speak life over our family, to use the weapons that the Lord has given us and not worldly weapons to trample over Satan so that our family members can be saved.
This is why we we are able to intercess for other people. People, Our family members half the time don't even know that we are praying for them. I know I pray for my family all the time, but I don't get on the phone and say, hey, I just prayed for you. I just do it. We have the power to intercess on our family's behalf, on our friend's behalf, on people that we don't know. Sometimes I pray for people if I look at them and they're, we're sitting at a red light and I look at a person and I just feel like in my spirit, I'm supposed to pray for them. I'll start praying for the person at the red light. I don't know them and they don't know me. And I don't know what I'm praying for them about. I just know the Lord will drop it in my spirit to pray for someone and I'll do it. Guys, we have the ability to save souls. And that's what the Lord was showing me in this dream. So in this season that you guys are walking in, especially, but this is a message for not just going into the season of harvest and abundance, but overall, you will be around people that portray themselves as the light and that's not who they are. You will be a around a lot of unclean spirits that Satan has sent your way and to you if you don't use your discernment, which is your spiritual judgment, okay? Judgment here on earth is just your ability to judge well. But when you have discernment, you have the ability to judge well from a spiritual standpoint. So open your ears, pay attention, but ask God to give you the discernment and the wisdom in these um, upcoming seasons, in the season that you're walking into, so that you recognize unclean spirits when they're surrounded by you, when they portray themselves as, as a friend, but that's not really who they are. But don't just feel the need to just write these people off and rebuke them in the mighty name of Jesus. Like, we are here to save souls, guys. We are here to save souls. We are here for a reason, and it's bigger than us. It's bigger than us. And the second coming, like we want um, as many people to go with Christ as possible. That's the end goal. That's the end game. Okay, that is the end goal. Whether it's family, friends, whoever, the goal is to save souls. Um, so that's all I have to say, guys. I hope this message really helps. I hope it made sense. I tried my best. <laughs> I know it was a bit of a parable. But um, it needed to be said. And I love you guys. I hope you have a happy Friday. Um, be blessed. Bye.